Ezio becomes an assassin in order to avenge the tragedy that's befallen his family. People that are very close to him are taken from him, and he's been uh, branded a traitor and a criminal. The city guards who once respected him now hunt him, and the very people that claimed uh, they would help him in his time of need have now turned against him. Right after this event happens, he finds that mercenaries, prostitutes, and thieves are not the people that he should be fearing, but actually are the most trustworthy people. What was important for me when we build the world of Assassin's Creed 2 is that you felt that you were part of one group of individuals. So we said, let's use the underworld, and so that's our, your family. The three factions that we have are thieves, courtesans, and mercenaries, which will all help you either distract, elude, or literally beat up your enemies. The faction leaders will be met along the path in Assassin's Creed, and they will be asking you a couple of things to help them as they're helping you. So it's sort of a mutual trade-off between the two. A lot of people will end up helping Ezio. Uh, there's his uncle Mario uh, that he hasn't seen many, many years that will help him tone his fighting skills. There's Machiavelli as well that we find in the game. And uh, finally, obviously, Leonardo da Vinci, uh, who's going to become uh, quickly a very close friend of Ezio, not to mention a test dummy for his wild inventions. Leonardo is, uh, is going to be uh, one of your main friends and uh, basically is going to act as a Q in James Bond. For Assassin's Creed 2, we have the notion of crowd groups, where in Assassin's Creed 1, the crowd was a little bit individualistic, where no one would bunch up together. Now we really have formations that are moving along the city. You can blend in, you can steal from everyone you see, like because we have this economic system, so the economic system uh, gave us the opportunity to, to use the crowd differently than in Assassin's Creed 1. Banking came up just a few years previous to the time period that Assassin's Creed 2 is set. Some of the most prominent Italian families actually went into banking. The citizens of each of the cities started to move away from trade and coins actually became a marketable currency. And so we decided to say, that's great because we want to have it for the game and our subject tell us that, you know, it makes sense. So. We combine the two and that's why there's an economic system in Assassin's Creed 2. The most exciting thing about the economic system is giving the players the choice to do what they want with their money. So instead of feeding the player rewards at a given time that is set by the level designers, we give you a whole bunch of options that the player can actually choose when and where to purchase.